Hey guys, so I did actually take time to think about this topic and I talked to my intern about it. My intern is all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. He goes to Emory. He just finished his freshman year, a pretty cool kid. Don't know why he chose our company, but we're really glad to have him. And from the intern perspective who doesn't play magic and is very unbiased, I was explaining to him the community and bouncing some concepts off him of why the community has fractured the way it has. And it comes down to money. Now, let me go by saying this. I'll take two examples and I'll connect them very soon. So if you're an intern at a digital marketing company, let's say that you do social media, but you wanna eventually become a web developer, a web designer, then you start as an intern you work a few summers as an intern, you do get paid and you get free lunch and dinner, at least in my company. We have nice trips and vacation and all that good stuff. Eventually, once you graduate, if you wanna work with us, we'll give you a job offer, a full-time job offer, and you'll make an entry-level salary. After a few years, hopefully after 18 months, you prove yourself, you will have some clients that you take care of, you'll be able to manage yourself uh, more efficiently or even become a manager of your department. We're a very small company. Uh, right now, it's just five of us. We are increasing to six soon, but the five of us, uh, Norman, me, Wasim, Niha, and Jess, we've been together for six years, almost six years, it will be six years, October 27th of this year will be our six year anniversary, which is kind of exciting that we've been together and hung out and still like each other for that long. But then you, kept, you keep getting better because every day you get better at what you're doing. And then eventually you can own your own agency or like Amy, and I wrote her recommendation, you can work at a big company like T-Mobile. So not only can you go up linear, you can go up straight up the ladder of a company, you can also go, go horizontally to a bigger company as a promotional raise. Now, if you're a full-time YouTube YouTuber or content creator for Magic the Gathering, you have only one option and that's to optimize donations. So donations, um, that's a lot of money. I would guess that's 40% of a Tolarian or Wedge's income comes from donations. And then the other is a combination of merchandise sales, which I cannot assume makes that much profit, as well as uh, YouTube views and sponsorships. So let's just take the, let's put the sponsorships and YouTube views aside and talk about donations. So instead of getting a promotion at your corporate job, you need to just get more donations. That's how you get your raise. That's how you get your promotion. And that's why the community is the way it is. Because you have a lot of individuals in this community who are either pro magic players or pro magic content creators, and that's all they do. So for me, I have a business, I have people who work for me, who have families and dogs and children, and I hear about this all the time, weddings to go to, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'm very different because I will put money into magic and I will put money into the community. Now, you have other individuals who only exist in, they can only exist if they take money out of the community. So if these Patreon dollars ran dry, they run dry, or they cease to exist, then these people would no longer be part of the community. They would not have enough money to continue because they don't have outside funding. Everyone has expenses, and you can, of course, live at home with your parents. Um, you can not have health insurance. There's many ways you can cut your expenses, but at the end of the day, an adult is an adult and adults deal with bills. I love my parents to death. They live in a very nice home 10, mile, uh, 10 minutes away from me. 
and I live in a home equally as nice as theirs. But I wouldn't want to live in their home because that would just be awkward as someone my age. But that's me. That's that's my view of life.、Uh, maybe people want to live at home to save money. That is perfectly fine. In my opinion, I have a very famous opinion, and if you read the Inc. article about me, you will understand a ton more of why I feel this way and why my opinions are unique in this particular field. My business is in. One of my opinions is. Many of my entry level workers, they live at home to start, and they hate it. They hate it because their parents are very whiny. Their parents want them to move out. Their parents want them to get started in life. As long as you have a plan, and you can say, "Oh, I'm going to buy a home in ten years," or "I'm going to pay off my student loans," as long as you have a plan, I'm going to help you reach that plan. But so many of these magic content creators, they don't have a plan. Their lifeline is this dying game, and there's no other way for me to say it except it is dying. Why is it dying? Because you have so many other options as a younger person: mobile games, you have the Switch, you have so many other better things to do than play Magic: The Gathering. And I know a lot of you hate to hear that. But if you grew up today, and your choice was a card game, a physical card game, or Hearthstone, which would you choose? And you have no magic experience, and you don't care about the finance. You of course pick Hearthstone because it's easier to use. There's more players, and you can actually find a game and without it crashing, right? So back to. The story, and I do have a good story for you. If someone is their sole job, and the only way the only way they can get a raise or a promotion is by getting better, asking for handouts, they're already one hundred percent dependent on handouts. Let me repeat that again. If someone Job is related to getting handouts in the most efficient way possible. There's no way to wean them off handouts. They will be dependent on this magic community for the rest of their lives. So imagine a ecosystem, and imagine we're all in. Let's say a hundred people are in an island together. Now you do have women, children. You do have the elderly. And you have people who should be able to go to the workforce, but choose not to. They choose to receive handouts. Well, this island's going to fail if too many people are not working and being productive. Now, I know what many of you will say. You, many of you will say, "Hey, they create content. That is a job. That's a full-time job." It is, if Wizard of Coast paid them money. So, I own a marketing agency, and if someone gave me money to do marketing for them, that would be a job. But if I did marketing for them for free, and I would get money from YouTube views, and let's say I had a, my client was Wizard of Coast, they would pay me money to create content, right? And they do. They pay day nine. They pay spell slingers. They pay Brian Kibler. That's why Brian Kibler has to say this video is sponsored by Wizard of Ghost. They pay these Hearthstone players to go to these tournaments, where they're guaranteed, no matter how terrible they are, to get twelve thousand five hundred dollars. They pay poker players. Out of these eight people, half of them don't even play Magic right now. Literally, two of them. Quit magic to play Hearthstone. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. We're going to have a grand tournament with amazing prizes, and the four people they selected are non-current Magic players. Yeah, they did not do that by mistake. So it is one thing to be paid to create content, 
And it's another thing to ask for donations to create content. Right? So if I'm a business and I'm creating magic content, I wish the coast better pay me to do that, to say what they want me to say. But in this model, we cut off that payment. Wizard Coast is so greedy, they never pay. I mean, they essentially, for liability issue, never pay anybody. And now I'm a marketing company, but I'm going to make videos for them for free. But the only way I can survive is if I ask the people who are interested in this product to give me money to further produce videos for free. So the one component that is missing here is Wizards of the Coast. In the traditional sense, Wizards of the Coast would pay Tolarian Community College a full-time wage to produce videos. That's not happening here. Therefore, it forces Tolarian to have to ask for donations. Now, many of you will say he doesn't do that. He does that every single video. Not only one of the most famous videos in Magic and one of the best well-written videos in Magic is Can I Have a Dollar? I Lost My Job, Can I Have a Dollar? That is an astounding video. If you go back and take a look at it, that is a video that was probably scripted dozens of times over for the most emotional impact. I've made videos like that before too. I would never show you one of the videos I made, but yeah. Anyway, bye.